Hey, so today we're gonna tie a very effective micro streamer. So for me, micro streamer is any any pattern that is similar to like the woolly bugger. Um, this would be a pine squirrel yonker pattern, which is one of my one of my go to strip pattern for targeting trout in both river and lakes. So here I start with a size ten streamer hook with a black tungsten bead. I will start by wrapping a wire. Alright, so this is just one of those patterns where where I like to fish slower pocket of water in river as well as kind of strip for some of the bigger trout in still water that in my head is like this fly can just present a bigger profile than some of the double leech that I use for stripping, which is one of my go-to for bigger lakes. So once you attach the wire, I will add my iced up UV black. You can kind of go with any double net of your choice here. I know a lot of people also like to use something like flashy blue, like they wrap tinsel or flashy blue around here. Um, I'm not a fan of flashy blue simply because with dubbing, I find that a like these ice dub dubbing are quite flashy already, and b is kind of just allow me to build a slightly bigger profile in these pattern, right? Where I feel like with with tinsel, I have to taper the body with my thread, which you know I don't want to waste that much thread. And then kind of, you know, do all that stuff, which I don't really want to do, right? So after I fill the body with dubbing, I like to taper it just a little bit. I don't think it's a necessary step because you're going to brush it out later anyway. So now I got my pine squirrel. I do find that for size 10, 12, 14, these pine squirrel strip is a lot better than like the normal black donker strip simply because these hair on is not as long which is why i really like these so i just gonna attach a piece on here all right just attach it in and then now right around this section here the section where the double end i will spread the hair and then wrap the wire into that little opening there to hold it down right and that kind of just make my way up okay now I'll go a bit more up spread the dubbing and then wrap wrap this in right a little bit way up again spread this out Wrap it again and then last wrap. Right, kind of hold this back while I tie in the wire. And then from here, I just push this back and then just helicopter free. Oh no, come on. There you go. Just helicopter that. Alright, and then from here, this is where I like to, so I pre-cut this to kind of keep a lot of my pattern consistent because I'm tying like 10, 20 of these right now. But this is what this is when I would get my normal strip of black yonker. This is not the scroll piece anymore. This is just the normal black yonker, right? So I pre-cut one of those and then I'll make a double loop. So after I make the loop here, I, I will use one finger. Actually, wait. First, since all these hair is back, I like to straighten them out a bit and then pinch here to kind of keep it up. Right, then I would use my finger to open the loop. Slide these hairs in. 
I think this is a process that can be a bit tricky, especially since you don't, well, I don't have wax, right? But once these hair are in, I kind of look to adjust their hair length, right? You can see I'm not using the entire, like I'm not putting the entire hair of the bunny strip through simply because I don't want it to go too long where it will hinder the hook, right? And then, so what would happen is a fly, a fly like this, where this, I think these hair are too long and I do think it can hinder the hook a bit. So I like to keep these hair a bit shorter. So kind of try to have their hair end around where the hook point is. And right, and then I pull it a bit shorter like so. Right, and then pulling, pulling the loop straight to stop the bunny strip from getting out. So this is when I would just cut the bunny strip that is in here. Cut off the leather. Right. Straighten the hair a bit. Right. And then the reason why these are staying is because I'm keeping attention. Or like I'm pulling on this loop. So then it doesn't release on its own. And then kind of just spread out the hair a bit as well. Right, so I spread out the hair. And then I like to push in the end a bit. It kind of just so spins on me here. Right, I like to push in this end if I could, or pull on them to kind of make the hair slightly longer. All right, and now I spin. Okay, after you spin, kind of just give it a couple pull. It look a bit sparse, but you do, but in my opinion, you don't want that much hair on there, right? And then you can just pull and brush, pull and wrap, pull and wrap. Oopsie. Oh no, I got stuck in here. Okay, and when it reaches the end. Oh, I'm messing up everything. Okay, anyway. When it reaches the end, I like to just hold my leech and then just pull on the loop really tight. Right, to kind of make sure all the wrap is tight to the hook and then I'll secure it. Brush it back, tie it in. I'm tying these with a bit of a hotspot so I'm just gonna work up my hotspot there. And then from here you just wait finish. And whip finish again. I like to whip finish twice just to be safe. There you go. So little star trues hot spot there to kind of take give this five bit of color. I'm gonna go in with the brush and brush out this as well as brush out the ice stuff from underneath this. Right, and now you cut the tail, cut it however long you want. I will do this a bit of a shorter tail, so for me it would be around here. Right, a bit of a short tail simply because I don't want that much short strike on this pattern. I do think because of the bulk, it's already pretty enticing to fish. In water, this will slim down just a little bit, so it will look a bit more like this, or like this, in the water. And yeah, tie a couple, add it to your box, 
and let me know how you do. If you like the video, please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.